Hey guys, Michael Ruff from Unfiltered Gamer here, and we are at Gen Con 2018, and I'm here with Bruce at North Star Games, and we're going to be talking about a couple new games that they've got for us this year, as well as one that's been released recently. We're going to talk about so many things, and I'm going to prepare you. I want to talk to your camera person. I know you're looking at me through the lens. We're going to be moving, so be ready. Be ready. This is a moving shot. You didn't realize it, but it's going to be. We have so much to talk about, so uh, what do you want to start with? What do you want to start with? Do you want to start with the stuff that we have at Target that you can get right now? Yeah, it's probably a good idea. Okay, good. Well, then let me first show you a game. We have a game called Dude. Dude? Dude. Dude. It's a game where you say dude. That sounds like you would do that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's exactly how it works. So what happens is you have a stack of cards. They're all in your color. And they're going to show you dude in six different ways. So they're going to do it like this. Dude. You know how dude works. Do the question mark. You would say that like dude? Dude. Uh, do dude. the lot of O's. Dude. And then finally that one. So what you're going to do is, is you're going to say the card however you think it should be said, based on the way you're seeing the word dude. Okay. Everyone else is doing the same thing at the same time. When you hear someone and they're saying dude the same way you have it on your card, you say sweet. If they say sweet back to you, that's confirmation. Okay. Okay? You show them your card. If they match, you score it. If not, you throw it in the middle and you did not score it. When someone gets through all 12 cards, they say, chill. And then you have to chill. You count all your cards, the most cards wins. Awesome. So it's like a kind of a variant to Happy Salmon with words as well as like the differences in the, in the cards and how you say them. Exactly. Awesome. Exactly. So if we can intellectualize for a moment, that's what we do on these things. We intellectualize. If this is a game about how we communicate and how literally in English we talk to one another, then our, our second game, More Dude, another game where you say dude, <laughs> uh, is about saying dude like a robot. Okay. Okay. So, same basic idea. You're going to get six cards. You're going to say dude different ways. But in this case, you're going to say it like a surfer, like dude. Or like the guy from the front of a pizza box, like a dude. Or a pirate. Dard. <laughs> or like a ghost. I think you have the go. Ghost dude. 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 Exactly. When you match with somebody else, you're going to say sweet. If they say sweet, you're going to show the cards to each other. If they match your score, if not, you throw them in the middle. When someone's done all 12, uh, they're going to say chill. Then you count the number of cards you have. It is awesome. that simple. Cool. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> Both of those are available at Target right now. Uh, if you're watching this, I don't know when this is coming out. I'm going to pretend like it's coming out soon. Uh, yeah, uh oh, yeah, we're yeah, grabbing the thing. Yeah, yeah, we're yeah. grabbing the thing that's good. Is that that? You can get 10% off at Target using the code GENCON at Target.com. You can do that for both. This is Say Anything, and this is the new, the cards are obviously not this big. This is not to real scale, uh, but this is the new design of the cards. And then also Dude and More Dude you can get using that code. And that'll get you 10% off until the 15th of August. I'm like a Vanna White here. And you're, you're beautiful at it, honey. Thank you. I got you are long, beautiful hair. Exactly. To Turn those numbers. Uh. Uh, and then there's Say Anything right there with the new box, 10th Anniversary Edition, completely new graphic look to it, 180 new questions. Um, oh, wow. I, I think we were talking before yeah, we got I had on the it, original one. This is the thing, I'm actually going to break the wall a little bit. Uh, we talk before we do this and kind of discuss what we're going to do, and you had said, you, you know Say Anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so we've done a complete change to the way, the gameplay is exactly the same. Yeah. All we do is change the graphics of it. Feel free to look down here, look down here. This is where all the action is. There's the new scoreboard. Here are the new pens. Here are the new fun boards. And now they have like a banana and a pigeon. And I'm going to assume that is an ice cream. Or a shake. Yeah, it could be. Could be. Ghost. Uh, and now there used to be the selectomatic where you would spin the dial. Too many people thought it was a spinner. So now if you turn to the back, that shows all the other players that are not you. When you're the judge, you just check the one that you like. Okay. So now we, the components are used all the time, so you don't have to worry about, oh, my spinner doesn't work, or my spinner works too well, or because it wasn't a spinner to begin with. 180 new questions in that game. That will be out once again, part of the same Target sale, where if you use the code GENCON, you're going to get 10% off. So that's all the stuff. If you're at Gen Can't and you want to get in on the Gen Con stuff, that's exactly now how to do it. you can at Target. Exactly. Right? Exactly. So now we're going to show you our Gen Con release, which is most wanted. So if you take a look down here at the table... Most Wanted is sort of our love letter to poker. Sorry, I didn't mean to move that for you. It's sort of our love letter to poker and King of Tokyo. So we love King of Tokyo, but what we found is, is some of the turns in King of Tokyo, the least fun turns are the longest turns. Yeah. It's like they'll roll three times, score four points. Um, we wanted to make a way where we could make it as much thriller, as little filler as possible. Gotcha. So what we did was we took the basic idea, obviously we didn't want to do it with Yahtzee. Someone's already done an amazing version of that, and there's no reason that we should do that. They've done it better, we're not going to try. What we wanted to do was adapt it to poker. 
So what you have here is the designer of Evolution and Wits and Wagers, Dominic Krapuschetz, teamed up with Ken and Quentin, the designers of Happy Salmon, uh, to make this game, which is a combination, once again, of King of Tokyo and poker. So you have a hand of five cards, just like a poker hand. It's in a double deck of six to ace. Uh, you're going to play hands. You have these actions out here. Take a look at those. You're trying to become the most wanted uh, cowboy in the West. You do it by robbing the Pony Express, the stagecoach, and the train. And you form two, three, and four card poker hands. You also have three other actions every game. One is a duel in this version, uh, where I can duel you to try to kind of pull you closer to me. Okay. Uh, one is the church, where I can discard and actually get myself to a hand of seven. I can repent and get help. Uh, and then Honest Labor's on the board. I can discard cards of the same color, which are the same suit, to get money. You use money to pay bail, and so that when you get into these robberies, if you lose, you have to pay bail. If you have money, you can pay bail, so you don't lose any spots on the board. Oh, awesome. That is really cool. I yeah, like the idea. What's really neat about this is you're looking right now at St. Louis, which is the opening. It's the gateway to the West. Okay. All of these cards have backs on them. So, like, you have Dishonest Labor. There's also hidden somewhere in the box, if you go looking around, is a travel guide with new locations and new cards for you to play. Oh, really? So there is a ton of variability. What's really neat is, is we didn't just take every combination and give it a city name. We took the best, like, five that we thought we could find. But if you're the kind of person at home where you have kind of a game designer bug in you, but maybe you're not ready to build a game from the ground up, you can take these cards and start making the game you want to make out of them. Awesome. So you have a chance to make your own cities and kind of play in this system and go to wherever you go. I would guess either Reddit or BGG and tell people exactly what cities you've built and what works for your friends. Uh, so we think that's super duper cool about it. Uh, it is here at Gen Con. If you want to pre-order, you can pre-order from NorthStarGames.com and you'll get it right now. Or if you want to wait till it comes to your friendly local game store, I completely understand. That'll be there in October. Okay. Awesome. Yep. And then I'm going to show you one more really cool thing. Okay. Yep. We're, we're going to move. We're walking. I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. You're going to go that way. Here we go. We're gonna go this way. We're going this way now. Here we go. It's like a walking travel land right here. Here. We're facing right here. Okay. Because okay. What, you, what you're looking at here <laughs> is the Kenner Spiel de Jar winner, the Quacksalber von Quidlinburg. Now, when we bring it to this country, it will be the Quacks of Quidlinburg from North Star Games coming out. If trade winds are favorable, comes out in November 1st. When they are not, comes out December 1st. When there is also a rail strike, comes out December 15th. So essentially what I'm saying is, is I, I really feel confident that you'll have this for the holiday season. It just won the Kenner Spiel de Jars like two weeks ago as we stand oh, here. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Um, and we will be bringing, it's a very cool, it's a bag building pressure luck game where you are sort of a quack doctor, like a snake oil maker in the 1400s. And you are using the stuff in your bag to buy more things and to get points. So as you thin and your bag out. are those things useless? No, they are incredibly useful. Okay, so like I wouldn't actually want to use it to heal myself. Uh, that having been said, in the game, you certainly make points off of it. Oh, well, that's important. Then. Yeah, and I'm not here to judge whether it actually cures athlete's foot. I care about whether I make points. Yeah, fair enough. Exactly. I mean, like all good hero games. <laughs> it's all about the uh, capitalistic nature, Exactly, right? about the capitalistic nature of making these snake oil potions. Um, so it, it's super cool. It has almost like a blackjack pressure luck kind of feeling. You pull tokens out. If you get seven or if you get more than seven points of, like, the bad stuff, the snowberries, your pot boils over. And then you can only either get more money to buy more stuff for your bag or you can uh, get more points in the game, but you can't get both. Okay. Now we're going to be using them in the game. Then. Yeah, exactly. You're not actually going to rub them on your. Although I'll be honest. That okay. could be fun. But yeah, let's have a moment, folks. If you want to rub them on yourself, I'm not going to stop you. No one from here is going to come and tell you you can't. It's not advisable. I don't think it's a good idea. But I'm not going to stop you. And then we're going to do this. We're going to back up just so we get out of the aisle. All right. And there we go, because I technically I think we weren't supposed to do that, but eh. I did it, and it's not your fault, it's my fault. Fair enough. But yeah, so we have Quacksalber coming out uh, at the end of the year. We have Most Wanted, which you'll see in October, or if you pre-order, you'll see it now. And then, of course, the Gen Con games, Dude, All three More of the Dude, Say Anything. Oh, 10%. Yeah, take 10% off with Gen Con. And then you don't, get the you don't get the giant board, but the giant board sure is fun. I think with the hair, it's especially entertaining. It kind of matches. Like you got some like, um, like what do you call it, fashion right there. Oh, absolutely! Right I'm trying. Yeah, I'm yeah. trying. It works. I like it. 
Very good, very good. Awesome, well thank you very much for taking the time, North Star Games, to show us all the wonderful new product you have going on here. Uh, I can't wait to play some dude. No problem, thank you so much for joining me, and all of you out there, this has been a long video. Thank you so much for watching. And always look forward to seeing you guys next time here at Gen Con 2018. Dude, 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 sweet. Out. Oh, no. Chill. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another Unfiltered, Unfiltered Gamer Gen Con interview. I'm Callie, and today I am here with... Scott Rogers. Hi there, I am a uh, game designer. I am showcasing my new game. It's called Pantone the Game. It's published by my friends at Cryptozoic Entertainment. And we're standing here at the booth at Gen Con. Yay, Gen Con. How's Gen Con going for you so far? Well, it's frying my voice. But other than that, it is fantastic. It is probably my favorite show of the entire year just because it's a great combination of all exciting games and well, fantastic people. And you get to see all types of great stuff and you get to buy all types of great stuff. Indeed. <laughs> uh, so tell us a little bit more about Pantone. Like, what's the objective of the game? You know, who would really like it? How many players? Sure. So, Pantone the game uh, is a very simple party game for it, it does about from two to 20 players, so it's really good for parties. Um, in it, you get these color swatches, so kind of like it's based on the Pantone color system, which is like I have here, and you get these color swatches in the game, and you use them to build representations of characters. So, uh, for example, if you uh, have the Grinch, you would use like greens and reds and like, kind of make the Christmas hat and all that. And then the people at the, at the table also are trying to guess who that character is, and you take turns, you go around, if you guess it without any clues, you and the artist get five points, and as you go, you, you give more clues, but the scores get lower and lower. And you play three rounds, and the difficulty increases as you play. The first round, you can use any of the color cards in the box, the, and there's about 15 different colors, four color cards of each color. Then the second round, you can only use one of each color, and in the third round, you can only use three cards depending on, doesn't matter what the color uh, of the card is. And it's a lot of fun, it's, people pick it up very fast, it's very easy to learn, and it's what I love about the game is that everybody's version of the character is different. Like, I might make a version of Batman, and I'll use blue, gray, and yellow, and then you might build it and use black, black. yellow, and black, right? Right, sure. Yeah. So we all have in our heads these very different representations of these very well-known pop culture. And we have like some characters from books and characters from history. Uh, and it's a lot of fun. Oh, it sounds awesome. I can't wait to play. <laughs> I know. I just love, I like that it goes up to 20 players. Yeah. That's pretty unusual, but really great to have for when you have a really large group out here. Um, so I have one more question for you. Okay. And that is, uh, so what do you see you... Uh, uniquely bringing or a unique experience or vision to the board game community? How are you, uh, you know, changing the board game community? Well, um, I really love games that are tactile, that involve uh, handling things. My first game was called Ray Guns and Rocket Ships, and that was a miniatures game where you moved little characters on their rocket ships and they would fight each other in outer space. Pantone, you're manipulating the cards and moving them around to create these characters. Um, I love toys and I love the what they call the toyetic nature of board games so the things that I'm always interested in making have very fun toy like I want you to walk by and not just go I want to play that game but I just want to play with those parts well thank you so much Ross for sharing Pantone here at Gen Con and uh if you have any parting words, where to go to find out more about the game, maybe? Yeah, so you can buy Pantone uh, pre-orders available on Amazon, uh, Barnes & Noble, uh, any of your internet um, gaming stores. It will be uh, widely available, I believe, in September. So very soon. Yeah, awesome. Well, thank you so much, Ross, for it was very nice talking to meet you. with thank us. You. And that is our Gen Con interview here from Unfiltered Gamer. And I look forward to seeing you guys next time. Hello everyone and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer uh, Gen Con interview. I'm Callie and I'm here with Ross Thompson and we are at the IW Games booth here. And how's it going, Ross? It's going really, really good. The show's awesome. We're having a great time. Awesome. Great to hear. So I hear you have a lot of games that you're featuring here. 
could you uh, maybe tell me about one one of your favorites right now for sure? sure? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're showing off a lot of games right now at the booth, which is super cool. IDW's got a lot going on, all fun stuff, a lot of cool IPs. Uh, two of the games that we're selling here at the show, like right behind me, we've got Death Note Confrontation. So it's by uh, Jordan and Mandy Goddard, and it's super cool. It's it's a two head to head player game where you play as Kira and L, and you've got to find out. Uh, you know, uh, Kira wants to get 15 points by uh, killing criminals, and then L wants to find him. So that's, it's going really, really well. And then we also have awesome. our cool Mask of the Red Death. So we have the, uh, this is the uh, deluxe edition from the Kickstarter. Ooh, shiny. I know, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's got the whole thing right now. It's got the uh, the nice, cool book inlay. It, this one has the miniatures. It has all that art. So it's, it's kind of fun that we can show that off. Yeah, what, what kind show. of game is it? Like so how many game, players? It, it's a uh, three to seven player game. And so what you're doing is you are trying to be the most popular with the party. And so it's based off the Edgar Allan Poe Mask of the Red Death story. And so you're uh, gossiping and uh, dancing and all with the prince. And all at the same time, you're trying to find out which rooms that the uh, Red Death is going to be in after midnight. Because once midnight happens, he'll start killing people. And so if you're in the room with him, he kills you. So you need to find out which rooms he's not going to be in. And then you pre-program at midnight. And then hopefully you learned enough information to be there. So then at the end, the last person who's alive and then is, is the most popular wins. Awesome. So very yeah. competitive. Dark, yeah, yeah, yeah. Darker it's theme. Darker theme, but it's, yeah. it's really, really cool. So it's game designed by Adam Wise, and then it's fully illustrated by Grizz Grimley. And so it's, uh, he's an awesome artist, and he got to play around with it and really rock it out. Cool. And then uh, any other games you really want to highlight? Well, so we have uh, two more games that I'm definitely like, oh my gosh, you got to really check it out. Yeah. So we got our, our Batman the Animated Series game that we're showing yeah. off, right? Yes, that one I, I want to play. Yeah, 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 yeah. We'll make sure it happens, right? And so this is our. Uh, by Richard Lanius, and so it's a, it's a Batman the Animated Series. It's a, a co-op, dice allocation, threat management game. So there's four acts in the game, and each kind of plays through an episode. And at the beginning of each act, the city is invaded by thugs and henchmen and ninjas and poison ivy and bane. And so you've got to roll your dice and decide if you're going to attack either the, the villains that are on the city or if you're going to solve like, like the, uh, the story cards that are going on. And so you can take your, your cards and your dice and... When you roll them each turn, you can put them on the story cards to solve those adventures, or you can fight the bad guys and do all that. So, so you're playing as your favorite characters, right? You're playing as Batman, Batgirl, yeah. Robin, Catwoman. You're playing as the uh, GCPD. It's all super, super cool. It's all new art, so it's over 110 new pieces of art all from the animated series, which is super cool. And then it's got a really cool board presence that we just saw over there. The 3D buildings, they pop out. It's super fun. I love it. I love competitive games. I love the 3D elements. Oh, I'm yeah, excited yeah. to play it soon. It's all cool. <laughs> we all rock out. And then also, yeah. we're also showing off our new Team and T Adventures miniatures game right here. So we're going to be doing a new, a new Turtles game where it's going to be kind of a reboot of uh, Team and T Shadows of the Past. Uh -huh. and so we have, so we're, we're we're taking the awesome system by Kevin Wilson and revamping it with Pete and Daniel, who are the designers right here. Yay! And so it's going to be all new miniatures, all new art, all kinds of cool stuff, all building for a cool co-op, solo play mode where you're going to play through different stories that are in Turtles. Awesome. Thank yeah. you for showing. Thank you so much. Did you get a good, good yeah. view of that? Yeah, yeah. and the, on our new designers, designers here. It's all good to go. Thank <laughs> okay, you so much. Cool. Uh, Always oh, cool, right? Oh, oh no, more? no. There more to so go? I, have one, I have one more one question more for you. Question. We could go back over okay. here. Um, so what do you see uh, you, like, personally, like, uniquely bringing to the board game community or the, the experience you want to create or how you want to build the community? Board games is a wonderful way that we can all share moments and story tell and hang out, right? And so I think as long as everyone can play more games, bring everybody they want into it and just kind of build an awesome community, that's what it's all about. So I think the more that we can all do that together, we all win. Awesome. We definitely agree here at Unfiltered Gamer. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer interview. And I look forward to seeing you guys next time. Bye. Hey guys, Michael right here with Unfiltered Gamer, and we're currently here at Gen Con 2018 with Bradley Talton from Level 99 Games. Hello, hey. And we are going to be doing a little bit of a demonstration of what we got going on here. A couple of Gen Con exclusive like seed fighting system stuff, as well as some stuff you can already previously buy. And uh, we'll just be talking a little bit about that and hopefully a little bit of information about the stuff I heard from PAX South, as well as these guys here, right? Really quickly though.
So, uh, Succeed is a head-to-head -head battle card game. It's sort of like Street Fighter for your kitchen table. Two players choose characters, battle one another, try and reduce your opponent's life down to zero. Uh, there are no creatures or summons or anything in the game. It's you and your opponent on the line against each other, and the uh, the player who can knock the opponent out first wins. So, uh, it's like a regular fighting game. You have a whole It feels deck. like a Street Fighter game. Yeah, yeah. You have special moves. Your character is fully fixed. You don't have to do deck building or anything. You have all access to all your character skills right from the get-go. So it's a very intense, focused, skill-based game. Um, and yeah, so this is season two of the game. Season one has been out for about a year now. Big hit, we went out and did the second set, which is featuring characters from an upcoming cooperative adventure game called Seventh Cross that we're working on. Your first introduction to these characters is here. And um, these boxes uh, here are exclusive to the show will be out by the end of this year. This stuff is out in, in stores now, so you can go and grab this from your local game store. And what's cool about Level 99 is when they incorporate certain things like extra different little IPs that are involved in the game. So he's got like the Seventh Cross stuff here, but then you got stuff like Shovel Knight here and the Noir Automata game, which was really good as well. Adding it to the system as well. How awesome is that? It definitely feels like it. We love the crossovers. We love crossovers. I want to make, you know, I want to make the Smash Brothers board game. Uh, Do it! But that's kind of, that's kind of what we're shooting for here. We got all the things from all the board games coming together and uh, and building this uh, this cool system where everyone can battle with everyone else. And I was happy I got to play the game with Ferdinand because he's the one that's he's really into the level 99 game stuck. I think like his top three favorite games are all level 99 games. And so we played the XC just the, comes with like the basic starter set here. Going back and forth and how to play it. I'm like wow this does feel exactly what they were going for which is so cool. And just adding all the extra characters just so wonderful to have so much variety in the game. You're never going to not have uh, a different type of game, even though they all have the same basic like deck styles for each of them. It's still enough to play every fighter, and everyone has a lot of different types of strategy. And me and my friend pick up characters, we play them totally different. So it really is a way you can express your play style through the characters. Absolutely. And then we have two games we were talking about previously at PAX South that are not currently out, but are scheduled sometime. Yeah, probably around the end of the year. Um, that's the full Seventh Cross adventure card or adventure game where you fight against monsters and explore uh, spooky castles in a uh, kind of 1920, 1930s. Uh, that's my wife's style game right there. Oh uh, yeah, it'll be. It's going to be a great fun. That's going to be on Tabletop Simulator soon. So if you want to play, if you play test with us, you can jump in and try it out. Otherwise, you'll start seeing reviews for it probably around the end of this year or shortly before. And then BattleCon Unleashed is our big. Uh, BattleCon box. I don't know if you guys are familiar with BattleCon. No, I am. <laughs> Ferdinand makes me familiar with all your stuff. Yeah, yeah. So it's our first fighting card game, and we're kind of doing the big, like tie everything together. This is the last big box for the game. So we're gonna, gonna, we're gonna bring BattleCon to, uh, to you know, like, like bring it all together for one big show, big project. So that's our next big thing. Awesome, doing. great. And there's two more games here: Temporal Odyssey yeah. and, of course. So Temporal Odyssey and Professor Treasure, these are brand new for this show. These just came out here for Gen Con. Temporal Odyssey is a drafting battle card game. So if you enjoy the games like Hearthstone or, uh, you know, this kind of like really fast paced, very swingy, you know, uh, you try and kill your opponent on turn six because if you don't, they'll kill you on turn seven. It's very back and forth. Um, this game is super great. You don't have to do deck building, but you do build your deck because you're drafting cards constantly throughout the game. So you have a strategy that you're creating and synthesizing as you play through. Um, really fun, a lot of variety in this box. And then Professor Treasure is a competitive puzzle game where you place out tiles onto the board, you send out your crew to retrieve treasures that are, um, that are hidden throughout this castle, and um, you're trying to set yourself up in such a way that when you run your engine, it will capture more stuff and rob your opponent before they are able to capture all the tiles that they want from you. So, uh, very, very neat competitive puzzle. I think you talk a lot because there's a lot of games you got coming out here. It's I'm excited for them. These are all beautiful artwork, too. You can just look at the games and tell how much effort and work has been put into these things. And I really appreciate that. We got one more question for you, and I know you're a busy man, but. What one thing do you want to bring to the board game community that's kind of different than everybody else? What's one thing that either in the future or currently you're doing? Oh man, uh, that is that's quite a question. Um, well, with me, I really the camera's really on you right now. I know, right, right. So I really want to create these kind of cohesive, immersive worlds that kind of bring players into a into a new place. So we have like the world of Indians. We have like BattleCon, and we have Argent. We have Imperial Spells and Steam, our train game. Um, we have like Seven Card Slugfest, Distors, all these games that happen in the same world and they bring the characters to life in a lot of different lights and, um, and really kind of um, create a new place and you can kind of fall into something you're familiar with but also experience something new. 
and I think that's what the level 99 has to bring to board gaming. I think you are correct in that assessment there. Anyway, Brett, I really appreciate you taking the time to interview us, and I hope you guys go ahead and check out Level 99 Games. Where is the best place they can find all your stuff? Level99games.com, or you can join our community on Board Game Geek, and look for BattleCon Online on Steam, our first digital adaptations coming out next week after Gen Con. Ooh, that's exciting! I play a lot of Steam games, so I'm going to go and check that out as well. All right, man, appreciate it as always, and we look forward to seeing you guys next time.